Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Twit Specials is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. It's loud. It's crowded. It's filled with tech. It must be CES 2013. That's right. I'm Father Robert Balasser, the digital Jesuit, host of Twiet, this week in enterprise tech on the Twit Network, and we're here at CES Unveiled. Believe it or not, the show hasn't actually started, but I am excited. In fact, I'm so excited, I'm wearing my Aloha Tech shirt. And uh, what better way to start off CES Unveiled than coming to the Lenovo booth and speaking with Sam Ducci? Du du I I gave it to you earlier. Come on. I know, I know. I, I'm really bad. That, that shirt kind of threw you off. Sam Ducey with Lenovo. Ducey. See, I always wanted to say Ducey, but du that, that's... No, it's, uh, it's Ducey. Du now, Sam, this looks like, well, just an all-in-one, but it's not quite that. It's something a little bit different. Tell me about the Idea Horizon. Well, the Idea Horizon is a new paradigm in computing. It's kind of a table PC. So as the mode you see we have here right now, I'm actually in a table mode. The camera may not be able to pick it up, but the user experience typically has been, this is where you came from, right? This is what everybody's come and know to love in an all-in-one desktop. But we've changed that. We're bringing the experience of, if okay, if you bought a desktop today, and it's great to have touch on a desktop, but you're reaching up. You're always extending your arm. And if I'm sitting around and I want to play a game with my granddaughter, we're both reaching up towards the screen. To make that more interactive, we have this mode called table mode. So the horizon actually goes into this table mode where that experience now has been brought into an environment where it's more engaging. I now can actually start those games and we can play a game of air hockey if you want to and we'll see how good you are. Uh, or, or we could do things like I can make it educational. I can sit down with her and maybe study the math problem. So as people and developers create educational apps, which are out there today, I can make it much more engaging, not you know, what's five minus three, what's two plus two. I can set this into a table mode and it becomes much more engaging. Or if I have friends and family around and we've been on that latest great vacation and we want to get out all those great photos and I want to bore the heck out of you of every place I visited this past summer, I can fill you up full of all this wonderful stuff. But you know, I probably shot video as well. So if I go down and I say, okay, well, here's a beautiful video of, I think, someone's granddaughter that's here at the show, or someone's child, I can show you the video. But once you start doing all these different experiences, you can find very quickly you get it cluttered. So if you watch the screen, by doing what I call a shake, I can shake off all the elements that aren't relevant to the video, and I can then bring them all back. If I just want to focus on the photographs, I can shake just the photograph, and you'll see that the video has now exited the screen. So once you bring all this together, even as this environment, you've got to find a way of managing your content. And we've done that with some simplified gestures that we've incorporated into this new design. So really, a table experience, an engaging experience, that, like I said, we've got some really great games over here we can play if we wanted to, from air hockey to some of the familiar names that games that are out there today in the market are on even some of the uh, popular tablets, and we can play some of those games as well. What I like about this is, well, there are other companies that are trying to do concepts like this, 27-inch touchscreen built on Windows 98, but yours is a little bit different. It's battery powered, so it really is more like a tablet than it is like a desktop. And, and it, it has this, this functionality, this, this tilt feature, this cart feature built into it, so it's, it's not like you're taking an all-in-one and putting it on a cart. This is how the product is actually designed. Right. We've designed it with the intent and using it as a multi-purpose device, whether it's in power mode or, as you see behind you over there on the table, we also have one in standalone mode. So it doesn't have to be attached to the stand. We can pick this up and take it over to the coffee table. We can, of course, use the stand and make it an adjustable, so if you want to stand and play a game, you want to sit, sit and play a game, we can do that as well. But it really gives, it's a user experience element. And the portability, you got to factor in. You know, people ask, can we do bigger screens? Of course we can do bigger screens, but then you're starting to start losing some of that element of portability. Do I really want to have battery life in a 36 inch panel and a 50, you know, let's take the TV off the wall and just bring it down to the table. That, that becomes not something that you're going to want to do. So this brings together, I think, the right elements of portability when you want to have it in battery mode to bring it over to a table. But it also gives you the performance and the power because it can be configured up to run a full Win 8 with an, like an i7 processor. Now, you're in this touchy, touchy area where I could see people saying, well, why wouldn't I just use my tablet? Or why wouldn't I just use my touchscreen notebook? Why do I need a 27-inch table 
that's been designed for touch. And what, what exactly are you trying to hit? What's your demographic? Who are the people who you think are going to see this and say, that's exactly what I was looking for, that's exactly what we need? I think is what you're going to experience over time, people have to make a buying decision based on what they have in the market. There are some great desktops out there that purely provide just the elements of the experience you want to have when you're running a Win8 environment and you're always power attached and you have it located in one room and it stays there. I have no problem with that. You have people that are going to want to buy a tablet and sit down and be very mobile and sit out and move around a lot. Those experiences are all great. I think this interaction is something that's missing in the market today. Bringing people together is not what we've been doing. We've been giving them standalone devices and tablets, and my granddaughter sits over in the corner and plays a game. She's not with me. I mean, she'll come over and ask me to play the game with her, but it's not an interactive environment. Here, this kind of brings those things together. So I think it gives you that experience that it is a desktop, it runs Windows 8, but it brings the environment and the user experience that brings people together. It lets me share in a content enriched environment and it's very interactive and better be easy to use because that's what makes things you know customer acceptable is that I can do it and it's it's as easy as touching and touch has become very prevalent. I love it because you're, you're taking a risk of making a unique product something that the market hasn't seen before and uh, really I think that's in the spirit of CES so Sam thank you thank you very much thank you for your time. Where, 25 years in the PC industry it's the first time ever being interviewed by a priest I must say. Won't be the last time, trust me. No, but if, if I know Lenovo's going to be at the show, so where should people go on the internet to find out more about your product line? Where should they go at the show if they actually want to see you in person? Well, again, we're, we're here at these types of events, such as the, the early show. Um, I know from a, a, an experience standpoint, we have a venue over at the Venetian. Uh, it, it's in the Aquinox, uh, which is the Aquinox restaurant. So we're over there. We have some of the products set up and demonstrated over there as well. But by all means, up Lenovo.com, if you want to take a look at our products, this will be available in the summer of this year, and hopefully people will be excited about it. So thank you very much. Again, Seth, thank you. Thank you very much. You. you take care. Good show to you. Now, again, that's just the tip of the iceberg, because we're going to be bringing you plenty of cutting-edge technology, products you've never seen before. Let's, uh, let's walk around and see what else we can find. We're here at the Admiral booth looking at some flexible displays. I'm standing next to, is it Muriel? Muriel van Taterhoven, yes. And you're going to explain to us how, uh, well, this new technology, this flexible display technology actually works. It's a uh, Xsense, a new flexible touch sensor. So this allows for devices now to have touch on curved surfaces, wrap it around the corners of devices, and create complete new form factors. For example, curved designs like you see on the console, or phones where you have the sensor going around the edge where you can add controls and buttons on the edge of a device. Oh, we're seeing more and more devices that integrate curves, which, which is a nice departure from the, the flat lines that we've seen in the past. But where do you see this technology going? And, and what's the most difficult thing about implementing touch on a curve? Well, touch on the curves, there's, there's multiple factors. You need a curved display, you need a curved cover lens, you need a sensor that is flexible that you can bend and apply to curved surfaces. So what we're showing here is two pieces of that already. We have our flexible sensor, we have the Corning curved Gorilla Glass. So now with companies like LG and Samsung talking about curved and flexible displays, you now have all the ingredients to do a real curved touch device. Oh, when we're talking about touch curve devices, a lot of people are thinking of their phones. They're thinking of something like the Nexus, which has a slight curve to it. But uh, the products that you're showing seem to have much more of a curve to them. We're not talking about a gentle curve here, but actual bends in, in the display, actual bends in the touch surface. How, how does that work? So we can, we can allow touch the, the sensor to completely bend around uh, curved surfaces. Now, how that real curve will be, that really depends on the curved LCDs that we're waiting for to show up in the market. Oh, give me a prog prognostication here. When can we expect to see products like this actually get into the mainstream tech product market? It's hard for me to comment on it. Our product is ready. Um, again, it will depend on how quickly these displays are really available in the market. Okay, and now let's, let's go even further than that. What are the future applications that you see for this kind of technology? I mean, yes, there's consumer electronics. Uh, you've got a display here that shows it being used in a vehicle. But uh, where, where would you like to see curved displays, curved input and output really take hold? So we see touch only at the beginning. And um, the, the requirements for touch is going from consumer electronic devices to industrial, to home appliances, automotive. Basically, people expect wherever there's a screen that you can touch this and you have touch application. 
Well, thank you very much. Thank you for letting us see uh, a fantastic technology. And of course, we're interested in this sort of technology because, well, we like products that increase the number of spaces that we can use as input-output. But that's not the only technology that we see here at CES. Next to us is a table that specializes in health. I'm here with Fabrice from Happy Labs, who um, has a, well, it's a fork. Fabrice, what, what is this fork? It's a haptic fork. <laughs> That's the first smart fork in the world. So when you see here, there is a LED. When I press it then, it will vibrate if you eat too fast. So it's the first smart fork to help you lose weight by eating more slowly. And we are tracking important data, such as the time you eat, the time you finish eating. We will track as well the number of fork serving, the number of time you bring the food to your mouth, and the duration between each fork serving. So, as I said, if you eat too fast, it will vibrate and help you change your habit, your eating habit. This comes also with a mobile application where you can visualize the data that are being transferred via Bluetooth or USB. And uh, it comes as well with a web dashboard and a free coaching program in 21 days. It's going to be available by next month in February on Kickstarter and will be available for distribution in the US on, in Q2. Price will be around $99. What I like about this is it seems to validate things that our mothers told us a long time ago, which is eat more slowly. But yeah. uh, it, I mean, does that really matter when you're trying to lose weight, uh, how quickly you're eating your food? Uh, one thing is it's so difficult not to eat fast. Your mother told you, my mother told me all my life. So I was lucky that I met a French inventor called Jacques Lepin who invented this device. Now, when you eat more slowly, then you eat less. And when you eat less and more slowly, you have a better digestion as well. So at the help, it's helping you and you're taking conscious of the importance of nutrition. So that's why this device is going to help a lot of people to take and to change the eating habits. Let's get down to the nitty gritty. You say this connects to my smartphone. I'm assuming you mean iPhone, Android. Yes, we oh. have both. We'll have the iPhone, we'll have the Android and as well the Windows Mobile. And it connects to that via Bluetooth? So this version I have here is via USB, and the, the second version is coming with a Bluetooth. And then the, 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 this element, uh, I, I, I can't show it off on camera, but the fork actually vibrates. It's, it's some sort of haptic feedback. Yeah, it's like a, it's a loop. When you bring it here, it will close the loop and then the, start the vibration. Uh, someone using this system, let's say that they, they actually buy into it. They're, they're letting the device retrain their, heating, their eating habits. They're using the application so they can find out exactly how many calories they're ingesting, yes. how quickly they're eating. Uh, what are the real world expectations? What, if, I, if I were to give myself to your fork, what could I see? Now, it's important that you, you take it, I mean, you do it seriously and you, you understand the importance of nutrition to say, okay, I want to be healthy. I want to be fit. I want to be healthy. And this gadget is going to help you for sure because it's impossible to eat slowly when you're a fast eater. You know, you, your mother told you, my mother told me, and myself, when I was born, I'm, I'm born gluten intolerant. So it means all my life I've been very careful with nutrition. So here, this is not what you eat, but it's how you eat. So we're, and those devices are going to do a fantastic job in the coming years. We call this, uh, we are part of the health revolution, but this is the Internet of Things revolution. And this Internet of Things with the mobile is bringing a complete new, I mean, a vision of things that we really can help us take control of their health. That's what we believe, to answer your question. We want at Happy Labs people to take control of their health. Now, something that's been popular has been the gamification of everything. I mean, we don't want to go to some place unless I can check in and, and get some sort of badge. Are you planning on working in some sort of a gaming system to, to let people com compete with their friends over, the, over a social network? Great. It comes with a mobile application, a web dashboard, a free coaching program in 21 days, and a social game for the family. So you're going to be able also to enjoy the device and play with the family and learn the good hitting habits. Because at the end, it's the parents also challenge to make the kids and the family aware of the importance of nutrition. And that's what the Happy Fork can do as well. Uh, what I like about this is you're providing several different ways of feedback. The first is the haptic feedback. Yes. We, again, you can't see it on camera, but if, I, if I'm touching this too often, it actually gives me a little bit of vibration. And you can see the LED as well here on the camera probably. You can also see the, the LED, the green and the red. 
and when it vibrates, you have the, the red signal as well. And so there's that, and then there's also the sensor data that it's going to uh, get back to me, uh, either via Bluetooth or USB, that uh, will allow me to sort of will plot my course. Uh, a really good example would be, here in the United States, hybrid cars are efficient, not necessarily because of the technology that's built into them, but because people get to actually see their driving habits. Uh, is that the same sort of effect that you're hoping for? If people actually see their eating habits, then they, they might be able to change them more easily. Yeah, and uh, we believe everyone will have a smartphone. We believe nutrition is so important in your health. So definitely, every day, the happy fork is so easy to use because you need a fork to it. So just to make it intelligent and smart and to track all your data on your smartphone. So you will see week after week your improvements, you will see your data, and with the mobile application, you can also take pictures of what you're eating. And I was talking about the gamification and the game. So it's, uh, it's uh, definitely uh, with the family as well that you can enjoy those things, or the people you love. Okay, so we've got the fork. What's the next level for Happy Labs? You have a spoon, a knife, or where do you go from here? Uh, you know, like the Happy Fork is about nutrition, what we just talked about. What we feel is also very important is the activity. So we also have here the activity tracker called Happy Track. So you will know how many calories you burn, you will know the number of steps. And for the first time we added on a device a happiness tracker. You can track your happy moments. You easily press on this button here and you will see a smiling face and you, do, you can leave the button pressed for up to 10 seconds and record the intensity of the happy moment. Like what I'm doing right now here, we can maybe see a little bit on the camera. And then automatically it will be transferred via Bluetooth on my phone and I can record with a picture to add a special moment. This is to take people, they take control of their health, fitness and happiness. We feel it's very important as well to feel happy because 50% is also part of our brain to be healthy and fit. So that's the two devices we are introducing here at the CES Unveiled and the starting Tuesday at the CES. Now Fabrice, that, that's interesting because I haven't heard of another health tech company take that approach where, yes, you have to have the feedback, you have to have some sort of device that helps you see what you're eating, see what you're putting in your body, but you're also trying to encourage people to sort of hold on to happy moments, to live less stress. Yes, it's so important. Right now, every time we watch the news, we read articles, we feel stress. You go to your office. So we have to take control of that. We have to understand. And that's why those devices are helping us when you're eating, when you feel a little bit sad, whatever, then you have the happy tracker for happiness tracking. That's what Happy Labs, happy labs is about. Okay, Fabrice, that's Happy Labs, and if they want to find out more about your company, about your Kickstarter, where should they go? So happylabs.com, H-A-P-I labs.com. Kickstarter will be in February. And uh, yes, that's the two devices that we are launching this year, and we are very excited and very happy to bring this to the United States. Fabrice, thank you very much for talking to us. Now, of course, Happy Labs isn't the only health-oriented booth we've got here at CES Unveiled. Right next to us, we're going to have a little chat with the body media fit people who are, uh, well, they're giving us something like a Fitbit, but on steroids. Let's take a look. So as we move over to body fit media, we're going to be speaking with Aaron Fitzgerald. Aaron, thank you very much for talking to us. Of course. Hi, how are you? Okay, so I, I don't want to sound rude here, but I've seen health technology before. I mean, I've tracking how many steps I take, tracking, we, we were just talking over to the, the folks at Happy Lab about tracking how much food I take in. So what is, what is your company doing that's different? Well, we've been doing it for 13 years, so we like to consider ourselves the pioneers in this space. We have over 90% accuracy through these four sensors. This is our new armband that's going to be coming in August. It's called Core 2. Waterproof, Bluetooth low energy. It's also going to come with heart rate. Also, these straps are going to be interchangeable, so you can have more of a jewelry, silvery kind of a strap. These face plates will be changeable. Same, same accuracy, over 90% accurate, tracks your calories burned, steps taken, your sleep, and your physical activity levels. You're also going to see our core armband on The Biggest Loser, which premieres today. So look out for that. And again, the difference is accuracy, because if those numbers aren't right, you're going to have, your, have yourself in kind of problems. So because we're on body, accuracy over 90%. Been doing it. We know what we're doing. So look out for the core two coming in August. Now our, our audience, they're, well, they're, um, they're geeks. They're big 
you're geeks. You're all big, huge geeks. And that's a good thing, but that means they're not going to forgive me unless I get the specs. What are the, the things that your band will actually measure? Calories burned, steps taken, physical activity, both your moderate and your vigorous activity, and also your sleep. And then that all goes through, this is Bluetooth, so I can take this to my mobile app, to my iPod, to my Android device, and I can see the data just like that while I'm on the go. I can log my food through some of our great partners, MyFitnessPal, uh, RunKeeper to track your activity, um, earned it, you can earn rewards with your data, so really great uh, ways to stay healthy with this device. How does it track all those? I mean, those are, those are great metrics to have, but I mean, it it's probably has an accelerometer, some sort of infrared detector. What are the different technologies that you have to put into your sensor band to actually be able to give me that data? Yes, so there are four sensors back here. Accelerometer, like you said, measures your motion. Galvanic skin response. Heat flex sensor, which is basically the sweat dissipating off your body. And then also your skin temperature. So those are all things that work together. Grab 5,000 data points a minute off your body. Run it through algorithms. Put it in your online activity manager or through your mobile app and you're good to go. And also our newest mobile upload allows you to take your Bluetooth right through the app, upload it right away, no cord necessary. Now, as you, as you mentioned, Body Media has been doing this for a while. I mean, you, you are sort of the acknowledged masters in the field. Uh, your, your equipment is, tends to be more sort of medical grade. I mean, it's, it's really high end, high performance, high accuracy. So let me, let me give you a chance here to talk about the industry in general. So your field, you're seeing an explosion of devices and sensors that measure biometric data. What would you say is, is one thing that's missing that Body Media does really well? Accuracy. It sounds like I'm beating a dead horse, but it's true. Because we're on body, we are the most accurate device on the market when it comes to calorie burn. And again, that's important. Our users see results. Our users know through the online activity manager, through your mobile app, you can see what deficits you're having every day. How many calories did you burn? How many calories did you consume? It's math, simple math. You can't mess with the numbers. So the serious science is going to bring you serious results, and that's really where we stand out. I like that. The serious science is going to bring me serious results. Well, if they want to find out where they can get some serious results, where do they go to find out more about your company, about your products, about your new releases? www.bodymedia.com. And actually, right now, we have some great January promotions going on. So definitely check out bodymedia.com. Aaron, thank you very much for talking to us. Enjoy the rest of the show. Are, are you going to be around? Are you just here or are you on the show floor? I'll be around on the show floor, yes. Come see us. Where are you on the show floor? I believe we're in South. South Hall. I'll come see you. I mean, not, not that I need exercise or to watch my health or anything, but maybe it's... It's about the technology. It's cool. I mean, you can't, you can't argue with cool technology like this. I like that. Cool tech. Thank you very much. Now, we're going to walk over here for a bit because that's not the only health technology booth or booths that we've got in CES unveiled. It really is, uh, well, it's, it's a big trend that we're seeing today where we've got the merging of the physical and the technological. It's a cool trend because, well, let's be honest here. A lot of nerds, a lot of geeks like myself, tend to spend a bit too much time with our technology and we end up looking like, well, we end up looking like. So, we love it anytime there's a tech company that acknowledges that fact and says, let's gamify what you're doing and uh, let you use technology in a constructive way that will help you build your body rather than destroy it. We're going to walk over here and we've got one more booth that uh, caters to health technology. Let's see what they got. I believe I'm speaking with, is it Max Safari? Max Safari, no R. Oh, Safari, you were so close uh, to having a... Pretty close. <laughs> Safari, yes. Max Safari, Max Safari from, from Massimo. Oh, Massimo Corporation, yes. And, and tell me, what is it that you do here? I, I know that this is a, is a, it's a sensor, it, it plugs into my, uh, my device and, and gives me blood pressure, but uh, it seems to be a bit more than that. So it's not the blood pressure, me, I'm sorry to correct you, especially on TV, but this uh, measures your uh, oxygen saturation, your uh, pulse rate, and your perfusion index. Massimo uh, Corporation is a 24-year-old company. We make products for the hospitals, and this is our, our first consumer product that we're making available. Uh, right now, all that technology is in this, this little box right here. The cable is called ISPO2, and uh, it's on sale at Amazon for 249 
primarily, uh, you know, people who climb out in altitudes, uh, aviators, fitness buffs who want to really tune their bodies, you know, and they, they, they exercise, they check themselves, and they want to see how fast their, their, their heart rate goes down and so on and so forth. And recovering, people who are recovering from home, and you can save your data and email it to your clinician. I'm glad you corrected me because that is so much cooler than just a, a, a blood pressure or heart rate monitor. I've seen O2 sensors before, but they've always been incredibly expensive. How have you managed to get it down into a small device like this and drop the price to 249? Well, we're really lucky. We have a great engineering team, and they were, you know, after years of putting the technology in uh, complicated uh, monitors, we've been able to put into one uh, tiny little PCB here with uh, a lot of DSP. And that's how we were able to cost reduce it. Can, can I try this out? Absolutely. Let's, let's try. Now, before we put this, uh, yours is what? 99% oxygen saturation. What should you see in a healthy person for oxygen saturation? Uh, you, should be, you should be above 97. You know, you know at, at 20 years old, you're at 100%. And then you lose 1% every, every decade, every 10 years. But if you smoke, you lose more. Well, I'm 87, so I... <laughs> okay, let's, all right, let, let's put this on. Let me ring finger. Let me your ring finger. We're not getting married here on TV, all right? Well, let's see. Um, okay, that's, uh, that's not good right now. No, no, hang on, hang on, don't panic. First of all, the, the pleth waveform on the bottom, as you can see, those little vertical bars, the taller the vertical bar, the more signal strength you have and the better the data. Right now, your perfusion is 5.1. Your heart rate is very fast. You're 132. You should, you should you know, give up coffee. No more coffee for you. And your oxygen saturation is 97, which is very good. You know, it's, it's definitely in the normal range, definitely very good. I can't slow it down, I'm just so excited by this tech. <laughs> now, now you, this is not something someone would use on a jog. I mean, you, you wouldn't have this thing attached to your figure as you're running. It, it, it would be something that you keep in your kit, as you said, when you're climbing or when you're doing a strenuous activity right. and you're actually doing training. Correct, and when you do training or when you're recovering at home, uh, people who do a lot of interval training, they could use this and to tune their, their workout, you know. They want to see how fast their heart rate goes back to normal, how fast it accelerate. Um, of course, mountain climbing, you don't want to climb too fast. You want to make sure you're acclimated to the altitude. Otherwise, you get altitude sickness. And people are on airplanes, you know, maybe pilots and things like that. But, you know, you get a lot of the technology that we have developed. Let me put it in the right way on ISPO2.com. Signal extraction technology for Massimo Corporation in this tiny little box. Yeah. I got to ask, uh, have you used this on an airplane yet? And if you have, what, does your oxygen saturation go down when you go up in, in, in altitude? Well, no, they, they have pressurized cabins, so it doesn't, their oxygen level doesn't drop. But, but you, you, do, you do see some difference. You know, you can't escape it. There is a little bit of a difference, yes. Now, if they want to find out more about this product, or if they want to maybe even purchase one, uh, where are our audience going to have to go? Uh, so I recommend Amazon.com and ISPO2.com, and you can go to ISPO2.com for a lot of the data. Max, thank you very much. Cool product, something I haven't seen before, and that's what CES is all about, seeing interesting technology in the hands of interesting people. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, uh, there is one more health-related thing that we need to take a look at here at CES Unveiled, and that is, uh, well, the drink bar. Because when we're dealing with CES Unveiled, when we're dealing with miles and miles of corridors, a million and a half uh, cubic feet of space, all these exhibits, we're going to need uh, a little something, something to wet our beak. And uh, that's where this comes into play. This is perhaps the best health device we've got on the show floor. And uh, cheers. Now, if uh, you've been alive, you've probably been using a smartphone or a device with a touch screen. You know, something like this beautiful little Galaxy Nexus. It's nice because it's got a big screen, right? We like big screens. We like multi-touch. We like to be able to, to flick and, and do things like we would in the real world, but in the virtual environment. Now, this is a big screen. This is a freaking huge screen. We're at the 3M Touch Systems booth, and I'm standing next to Diego Romeo, who uh, is going to explain to us what this all is. Now, Diego, what is this other than a freaking, almost comedically large touchscreen? What it is, it's, it's an 84-inch display. What we're trying to show is that you should be able to interact with displayed image anytime without thinking about it. So we're trying to show an application that exists today in the, in the Chicago Museum of Science to be able to educate kids how to use ultra-infrared light and visible light 
and other type of light sources. The whole point is that you should be able to touch it, expand it, move it, and the experience should be the same that we offer to do in smaller sizes uh, uh, displays that we offer today. So for us is to show that our electronics can go to larger sizes, but again, it's driven around that your experience touching the displayed image should never change. You should not have to think twice about interacting with displayed image, and that's the experience we want to give you in a very, very large size. Now, of course, this, this is a showcase. I mean, this is to show us what the technology is capable of. But I, I think you bring up a very important point, which is people are getting used to touch devices, be it their phones or their computers or their tablets. And uh, you do need to be able to make that transition. If you're using your smartphone by flicking items across the, the way and, and resizing with pinches and turning, well, you should be able to do that with, with industrial and enterprise class products. So, now, how do you promote that trend? How do you get people to make the jump from one to the other? Well, we used to have to teach people what touch was. We no longer have to do that. And so when we show applications such as this, we show that you don't have to think about it. You move it, you expand it, and as you said, if you use it at home, you should be able to walk to a wall, you should be able to walk to a store, you should be able to go to a bus station, train station, and have 10 people touch it at the same time and find out where they want to go. You should not have to think about it, no different than you shouldn't have to think about at home when you're using the display, interactive display. I've, uh, I've seen technology like this before at CES, but it was using uh, Microsoft Surface technology, which was uh, basically cameras behind the screen that look for your hands, infrared and invisible spectrum. That's, this, that's not this. This is actual, I mean, it, it's really thin. It, it, it's an actual, like, huge tablet. Well, what this is, yeah, we provide the sensor technology, so what we're doing is our, 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 our electronics are calculating within a six millisecond type of experience and calculating every touch you do and going through the algorithms to be able to know where am I, where's the touch moving, what's the last touch point you touched. So the whole point is that it's not optical, it's actually sensor technology, and, is, and so we use, for this particular application, we use copper wire to be able to, you can't find anything more conductive than copper wire, and so our electronics are able to work all the way across the same type of sensor technology that we use for our other applications you'll see at our booth. Okay, I, I want to talk about scaling now, and this gets to the heart of some of the technology that I'm really interested in, and that's, that's in the enterprise. I mean, w when you take something like a, a, a touch screen and you make it this large, obviously it's got to be more sensitive than a, a standard tablet. It's got to have more, more possible multi-touch points than a, at a potential tablet. What's the technology that goes behind that? I mean, how do you take something like an iPod Touch and scale it up to the size of the side of a building? That's where our 3MA6 comes in. This is what we're trying to show the 3MA6 and what and the technology behind it. Uh, that's where our engineers have developed that they be able to, in, the, in this particular case, 40 touches. We can do 60 touches today on a, on a 46 inch display. That you'll see at the show, that's already commercially available. And what we're able to give you is all the way to 100 touches if you so choose. It all depends on the application and what you're trying to do with it. Uh, let's, get, let's get a little bit of a futuristic here. Where would you like to see this kind of technology end up? I mean, of course, it's going to be ubiquitous. Everything is going to be touch-enabled. But what would you like to see out of your company, out of 3M Touch Systems? I would see this in every single uh, bus station, train station, airport. Anytime you want to be able to go from point A to point B, you should be able to have 10 people interact with the same content at the same time, get news, get information, find out where the nearest McDonald's is, and be able to go with it. Uh, uh, retail applications, you'll be able to see applications where people want to have their experience be able to have people use it and try it without having a salesperson trying to find out and pitch you the product. What you did at home, you should be able to do the store in a much larger experience. Diego, thank you very much for, for talking to us. Thank you for showing off your tech. And uh, it's tech like this that we love to see at CES because, well, it's what we've come to expect from CES. CES has changed what we think about technology, what's possible. I mean, when you think back to the, the first CES in 1967, when you think about all the releases that they've had at CES of new technologies, things like VCRs and DVDs and HDTVs, of Pong, of the, of the Nintendo Entertainment System, we're talking about genre-breaking pieces of tech that, uh, well, have forever changed the landscape of uh, well, geekhood. Now, we also, well, don't just use technology for things that are shiny and things that are cool to play with. We like to use technology for information that is good for us. And that's why we're stopping by the Why Things booth. I'm here with, uh, is it Clement? Yeah, yeah. 
Clement, and, and um, well, what is this? So uh, this is our first ever introduced uh, smart body analyzer that feature two, two new great features that have never been built before on a scale. So first feature would be um, the heart rate, and second feature would be uh, the air quality. So this scale, what is particular is that when you will step on it, on top of transmitting wirelessly your weight, BMI, fat mass, will also give you for the first time the pulse. The, the, that is uh, done through your, your feet because you are standing barefoot on the scale. So that's a very important metric to know your heart rate condition. Yeah. And the second metric that gives, the scale gives is the air quality of the room. So without even you knowing, without you have nothing to do, each 30 minutes the scale is measuring the air quality in your room. So because what we can see is that by night, the carbon dioxide in a room tend to build up. And in order to improve your sleep quality, you should ventilate the room that the carbon dioxide decrease and you sleep better. That's the whole purpose of the scale. I, I did not know that. Uh, can we take a look at this? Yes, of course. All right, let me, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I don't want to step on it because uh, I would be embarrassed. But <laughs> So I, I, I've seen this scale before. Uh, it, it, and last year, it, it, it had the, uh, the feature of being able to tweet so I could tell my friends whether or not I'm losing weight or not. But you, so you've added a sensor here that can take my pulse right through my feet, and you've added a sensor that can detect well what the air quality is. It's exactly that. We uh, keep the best features that has made this scale the best Wi-Fi scale in the market, and yet we have we, we have just asked what can uh, uh, we bring to our consumers that love uh, the Wi-Fi's Wi-Fi scale, and we still uh, very important. Uh, uh, data uh, uh, about their health and their environment, and we have just uh, uh, built them into the scale for the very first time in, in, in a bass room scale. So we, we want to keep the same pitch, we, we don't want to add anything special to do, uh, so the person just can keep its uh, daily routine, we'll just have to step on the scale, tweet the weight if the person wants to, and also access all the very important information about the health, such as the heart rate, and about the environment, such as the air quality, obviously. Now, OK, I, I, I get all the, the, the big stroke vision of the Y things. And it's very cool. And again, I, it would be embarrassing, so I'm going to ask you to step on this later on. But guide me through how they would set this up. So this thing arrives in the box. What do they have to do to start collecting data? What do they have to do to start actually learning from the data that they're collecting how they, people should change their habits? Well, basically, I would say that once you receive the, the packaging at home, it's a two-minute setup. You just have to open the box. Uh, the manual is a one, two-page tops. And then it's a PC-free experience. That's uh, also new about this scale. So the setup process is done directly uh, via your smartphone or your tablet, uh, via the Bluetooth. Uh, it, it takes really, uh, it's a matter of a minute. It's a one-time setup process to do. Then it's, you just put in your bathroom just like your old disconnected scale, let's say, just know that you have a, a brand new scale that is very easy to set up and to use thanks to the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth technology. Okay, now I'm gonna ask a very important question for geeks. I'm gonna hand this back to you, and that is, can I hack this scale so that it says I'm lighter than I actually am? <laughs> well, ba well, basically, um, I guess you don't have to do uh, that with this kind of scale because since it will, it will uh, track your progress, you will be enticed to write more on your weight. Uh, we have put a new feature on the app that you might like, which would be the possibility to set a weight goal and to seek motivation uh, uh, from your friends so that you might want to reach your objective and not be ashamed anymore of the weight that you have because you know that you are going to uh, uh, get your target. So I, I could get to my target, but um, I like hamburgers too much. I mean, really. I I like them. Well, well, then I have something for you that you might like, which would be the second product that we have announced, which will be the Smart Activity Tracker. And even so, if you eat maybe a bit too much, it will encourage you to do a lot of activity. So this product is right there. It's an edge gram piece of device. That Lay it on me here. What, so this, this device right here? Well, uh, yeah, uh, it, yeah, yes. So this device right here is Wissing Smart Activity Tracker. So it will track the number of calories you burn, the distance you cover, the steps that you have taken in a day, and the stairs that you have climbed. Yeah, and uh, the, so we have added one feature that I've never been put on a tracker, which would be uh, the pulse. 
So it remembers this feature from the scale. We have also put it in the device. So you just have to put your finger at the back of the device for 10 seconds or less, and it will give you uh, your resting heart rate. Now, I've, I've, I've followed Y things for a while, and you've got, you've got things like the scale, you've got things like the tracker, you've got things like the, uh, the, the, the cuff that can take your blood pressure. Where are you going with, with all these products? I mean, what's the general philosophy of Y things? Just taking technology and, and helping you to, to lose weight? Or what's, what's the philosophy that you run by? Well, basically, our positioning is that we are between the people who do a very small stuff and the people who do nothing, and we just are in between. We just want to take the, the large majority of people who are sitting behind the desk all day and get them to do a few things. Not many things, just a few things, just walk, just exercise and just act on uh, themselves because what our philosophy is you, you have your health at your fingertips and we just want to give uh, objects that will let people easily act on themselves and will let them motivate through the process so that they uh, don't say, oh, no, it's going to be too hard for me. No, it's going to be very easy for you and we are going to make it easy for you. That's, that, that's our core purpose. I like that. So it's motivational tech. It's not tech that makes me feel disgusted about myself. I got that. Clement, thank you very much. Thank you for showing off some very cool technology. Uh, and uh, you're going to be here at CES. Where should people go to, to find out more about why things, more about your product? So we are in uh, LVCC South Hall 2, booth 26500. Uh, and uh, please, uh, please come to our booth. We'll be very uh, happy to have you there. Best of luck to you. All right. Oh. Now, uh, you know, I remember the first time I came to CES. It was about 15 years ago, uh, and I came as a, uh, just, just a regular attendee, an analyst, if you will. It's changed over the years because, well, the focus of consumer electronics has changed. It's become a far more competitive environment with a lot of commoditization of products that we, we once thought were, well, state of the art. But uh, there are occasionally companies that give us products that, again, will change the way the technology in general works, specifically the interface. I'm here at the Synaptics booth, and uh, we're going to take a look at some technologies that are trying to change the way that we interact with our systems. Not just touch, but, uh, well, input-output. All right, I've just been told by uh, OMG that we have a space here at the Synaptics table. And I'm speaking with, uh, speaking with Jimmy Lin from Synaptics. Jimmy, hi, Robert Balser, very nice to meet you. Now, Synaptics, a lot of people don't realize, is the company that made the in-cell display. What does that mean? Yeah, in-cell is basically where we take touch technology that's normally on a separate layer, and we put it directly into the display such that you get much thinner phones, much brighter phones, and they also take up less power because I don't have to shine through so many different layers. Uh, this is the same thing that's uh, been found in the Apple iPhone 5, and we actually went out to market even earlier than Apple. This is the world's very first end cell phone. Now, a lot of people don't realize that uh, w when we talked about smartphones from way back, you know, two, three years ago, we actually had multiple layers. You had the backlight, then you had the substrate, you had the, t the uh, glass and the, the touch sensor, and then protective glass above that. What lets you put all of that into one big sandwich? Yep, so basically we spend a lot of time with the liquid crystal manufacturers to understand how do we put the touch into their manufacturing process such that we can eliminate those layers without sacrificing our performance. So there's a lot of systems knowledge and a lot of understanding of touch. Right. Now, in-cell technology seems to be something that everyone has to use now because, you, of course, you want your device to be thinner, you want it to be more durable. What would you say are the main advantages of having an in-cell screen? Yep, uh, main advantage is having brighter displays, uh, thinner phones, and it also takes up less power, uh, less power consumption because I don't have to shine through so many different layers to get that same kind of crisp display. Right. Uh, Synaptics is known for input-output. I mean, that's, that's what you do. It's what you're famous for. If you've ever used a trackpad, you probably use something with Synaptics technology built into it. But uh, you've got something here at the show that you're showing off uh, uh, multi-touch screens that can be used without touching it with your actual finger. Tell me a little bit about that. Yes. So what you see here is the Nokia Lumia 920. It is the world's very first phone that allows you to use it with a pair of gloves. So normally when, can you hold that real quick? Normally when you're skiing or it's really cold out, you put a pair of gloves on and you can't use your touch screen. With the glove, you can see right now it doesn't quite work and now it's auto-calibrating. 
So recalibrate it to, to see that I'm wearing a pair of gloves and I can still use that with no problem. I'm also going to now just take a pen, a random pen, and you can see it also works with just a random pen that I picked up off of the table. So this is just something that we help to try to distinguish Nokia and their phones and to help create a new usage model with touchscreen phones. I like that because I've seen gloves in the past that can be used with smartphones, but the gloves have been specifically designed with metal threads so that they can transfer the, uh, the EM field of your finger. You're saying you could use it with any device. The screen itself is the, the thing that actually recalibrates itself. Yep, no, that's correct. This is just a random glove that we took from the, from the store. Nothing special about it. And we can still be able to sense through that. So any kind of glove that you just got laying around that you want to wear, you can use with our Synaptics touchscreen technology. Now, so how do you keep Synaptics from becoming sort of just a background noise? I mean, you're in most every product. People use your technology, but it's hard because you don't, you don't actually build the phones. You build the technology that goes into the phone. What do you expect to, to innovate? What do you expect to do to keep yourself, uh, well, popular, interesting, and exciting in a, in a smartphone, smart tablet world? Yep. Well, you know, first of all, touch has become ubiquitous with all technology. So what you're touching is basically you're touching on Synaptics technology. So one thing that we've actually developed to help the end user and the everyday user understand what makes a good touchscreen versus a poor one is we actually have this kit here called the Touch Explorer kit. And it comes with an Android app that you can download for free off of Google Play. It comes with a noisy charger that you know all mobile phones, when you buy a phone, comes with a charger. That charger is actually a big source of noise that we can actually help block out and uh, be uh, robust in the presence of noise. We also give a lot of things like a metal slug to help simulate a finger. And you can actually use these things on your touchscreen, and you can see that with a non-Synaptics touchscreen, it doesn't work as well. On a Synaptics phone, it works really, really well. So just as a quick example, um, you know, here's a phone that's actually not using a Synaptics touchscreen. Now I'm using that same application that I just showed you. Now if I put this on the table, I use that metal slug, I draw a line, and it's extremely wiggly or it didn't even pick up the finger. Now if I take the same slug, now I'm going to use a phone with Synaptics technology with it. I draw a line and it's very, very straight. So touch hits home. If you're trying to use your phone, you get that. You don't want that. You want something that's very clean, very straight, and that's what you get with Synaptics touchscreen. So you're not just providing the technologies for the companies, you're actually training them on how to design them properly to make them work accurately. Yep, correct, that's a very good summary. Thank you. Now if people want to find out more about your technology, they want to find out about what products you're in, where should they go? Yep, yeah, come check us out on www.synaptics.com and you can get all the information you want from there. Jimmy, thank you very much, thank you for talking to us. And uh, we're going to take a wander over to the other side of CES Unveiled to give you a little wrap-up, talk about a couple of other companies that we find interesting. Let's take a walk. CES is one of these really interesting events because it takes quite a long time. I mean, the show itself may be four days, but it takes almost a month, about 18 to 24 days to build up, to maintain and run, and then to tear down the show. We're talking about something on the scale of building a small city. When you are talking about 3,000 vendors, when you're talking about 150,000 plus people, it doesn't come overnight and it, it doesn't come cheap. Now, we're here at, uh, well, uh, Sculptio with Clement, who's going to explain to us how they're using, well, a maker flare to give you more control over your case. Clement, thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you. Hello. Now, what is this that you're holding and what will it let me do? So, we are doing basically 3D printing. And we believe that 3D printing is a mass market technology. It's a real production technology. It's not only about doing prototypes or mockups. It's a way to create real objects. So this is an application that has been awarded by CES. We got a Best of Innovation Award. And for this app, with this app, we will be able to customize some iPhone cases. So for example, if we want to customize the profile case, we will select the profile case and then we will just send a picture to, to, the, to, this, to this app. So, of course, we have network problem here. Right, yeah, this can't be held against you. It's just any time you try to do anything over the air, you're running into a thousand other people trying to do the exact same thing. That's, that's the problem. So, we will um, use um, this application to send a, send a picture to the cloud-based infrastructure, and then this app will download the 3D model, and we will be able to create such an iPhone cases. Now, when people think about this kind of technology, 
you're right in saying that most people think of it as sort of a fast prototyping tech. It's something that you do for a one-off, but not necessarily for the mass market. You're saying, no, this, this can be for the mass market. What's different about the way you're using this technology versus the way that people are using it for fast prototyping? We use basically the same technology, but we have developed a lot of post processes to make this uh, product uh, really suitable for mass market. What do you get? So this is, a, this is a, a, a real iPhone case. It's smooth, and it gets colored, it gets colorful. So it's very interesting because the customer can send any kind of picture and put it on the iPhone cases. So we have uh, this custom process in-house, and we developed it ourselves, basically. So this is the kind of stuff that we do. I, I got to ask, how much would something like this cost? Let's say I want to make my own iPhone case. Um, I've got my own graphic. Uh, I can use a template that you have for an existing cutout and maybe uh, make, make a couple more cuts so that it's, it's, it's my design. What's that going to run me, and how quickly can I get it? So you will just customize the one template of, on our website or application, or you can completely design your own cases by just sending your 3D file. It's also an option to you. It will take two days for production and additional two days for shipping, so it means that you will get your own, your very own case by the end of the week, basically. Now, it's a different kind of tech. I know not a lot of people um, are thinking necessarily that they need to customize their own case. But I think you've hit a, a really interesting niche of those people who want something different, something special for their tech. Are you going to be expanding the, the number of products that you, uh, you support? Yes, for sure. So we, we, do, we do support ceramics 3D printing also. So ceramics 3D printing is very interesting because it's a, it's a way to create cups or mugs and very interesting stuff like this. And uh, where should they go if they want to find out more about the process, more about the product, or, or actually to order? So they can go to sculpteo.com, or they can download the 3D PKs application. Clement, thank you very much. And uh, will you be here for CES or just here at, uh, at Unveil? Yes, we are in the South Hall, so booth number 26111. You heard it here. If you want to find out how to make your own custom design case, go to the South Hall, check out Sculpteo. Thank you, Clement. That's all the time we have from CES Unveiled. Stay with us because we've got plenty more from the actual show. Remember, this is just the unveiling, the tip of the tech iceberg, as it were. Come back to twit.tv slash specials to find out all the new news from Las Vegas. I'm Father Robert Ballas here, the Digital Jesuit, and until then, you've been learning.